Now, what is cybersecurity? Now, cybersecurity is the practice of defending computers, servers, mobile devices, electronic systems, networks, and data from malicious attacks. And it is also known as information technology security or electronic information security. Now, the term applies in a variety of contexts from business to mobile computing and can be divided into a few common categories. Now, the categories, the first thing, which is the network security. Now, it is the practice of securing a computer network from intruders, whether targeted attackers or opportunistic malware. Now we have the application security. Now, it is focuses on keeping software and devices free of threats. A compromised application could provide access to the data it's designed to protect. So successful security begins in the design stage well before a program or device is deployed. Information security, it protects the integrity and privacy of data both in storage and in transit. Operational security, it includes the processes and decisions for handling and protecting data assets. Now we have the disaster recovery and business continuity. Define how an organization responds to cybersecurity incidents or any other event that causes the loss of operation or data. Now we have the CIA trait. Now the CIA is, is, it stands for three things. The C, which is confidentiality, the A, the availability, and integrity, which is I. Now, what is confidentiality? Now, it is the system ability to ensure that only the correct authorized user or system or resource can view, access, change, or otherwise user data. Okay? So, only the authorized person can access, view, change, modify, do whatever he wants, but only the authorized. Okay? Now, on the other hand, the integrity, it is a system ability to ensure that the system and information is accurate and correct. So, anyone can read the data, but no one can modify only the authorized people. So, for example, the hash stuff and the hash thing, it is an example for the integrity. So, for example, you want to download a specific program, you can see that there are a hash, SHA-1 or MD5 or whatever. So, this hash, to make sure that the file or the program you want to download hasn't been modified at all and it is integrity and it has the integrity okay so this is integrity now finally we have the availability which means that the information is accessible to authorized users and it provides an assurance that your system and data can be accessed by authenticated users whenever they are needed okay so make sure the system that available 24 hour per seven Okay, so which means all the time. Now, types of hackers. Now, we have three types, actually. The black hat hackers, the white hat, and the gray. Now, let's start with the black hat hackers. Now, the black hat hacker is individual who attempts to gain unauthorized entry into a system or network to exploit them for malicious reasons. Now, the black hat hacker doesn't have any permission or authority to compromise their target. And they try to inflict damage by compromising security systems, altering functions of websites and networks, or shutting down systems, okay? And they often do so to steal or gain access to a password, financial information, and other personal data. Now, the white hat hackers, on the other hand, is, or are, let's say, are deemed to be uh, the good guy working with organization to strengthen the security of a system and a white hat has a permission to engage the targets and to compromise them within the prescribed rules of engagement and a white hat hackers are often referred to as ethical hackers now the difference between white hat and the black hat the white hat has permission and it is to strengthen the security of as of system for specific organizations now on the other hand the black hat hacker actually to damage the system and to steal or do as bad stuff okay so white hat doesn't mean that he's not skilled or it doesn't he doesn't have, have skills or the white the black hat means he is smarter or he do things better no actually the white hat and the black hat doesn't refer to the skills he have no actually it refers to the intention so white hat good intention black hat bad intention and so on now we have the gray hat hackers now actually these exploits 
networks and computer systems in a way that black hats do but do so without any malicious intent so it is closing all loopholes and vulnerabilities to law enforcement agencies or intelligence agencies and usually gray hat hackers surf the net and hack into computer systems to, notif to notify the administrator or the owner that their system contains one or more vulnerabilities that must be fixed immediately okay so the intention here is good but they didn't have permission so that's why we called them or they called them a gray hat hackers now it's time to talk about hacking methodology now the first thing which is the footprinting now it is the process of using passive methods of gaining information about the target system prior to performing the attack it can reveal vulnerabilities of the target system and improve ease with which they can be exploited. Now, various methods are employed for footprinting. For scanning, it is the process of taking information obtained from the footprint phase in order to target the attack more precisely. And some of the methods used in this phase are port scans, Bing sweeps, operating system detection, observation of facilities used by the target, and so on. Now we have enumeration. It is the process of extracting more detailed information about the information obtained during the scanning phase to determine its usefulness. Some of the methods used in this step are user accounts enumeration, SNMP enumeration, uh, Unix Linux enumeration, LDAP enumeration, NTP enumeration, SMTP enumeration, DNS enumeration, and so on. Okay. Now system hacking, it is the process of planning and executing the attack based on the information obtained in the previous phases. In this phase, the attacker performs the actual hacking process using hacking tools. We have the escalation of privilege. It is the process of obtaining privileges that are granted to higher privileges accounts like the root or the admin than the attacker broke into originally. The goal of this step is to move from low level accounts such as guest account all the way up to administrator or root. Now we have covering tracks. The, it's the process of removing any evidence of the attacker's presence in their system, and the attacker purges log files and removes other evidence needed for the owner of the system to determine that an attacker occurred. Planting backdoors. It's the process of securing an authorized remote access to computer, so the attacker can access the system later without being detected and backdoors are usually a computer programs that give an attacker the remote access to a targeted computer system. Cybersecurity attacks. Now we have the, prot the brute force attack. A brute force attack uses trial and error to guess login information, encryption keys, or find a hidden web page. Hackers walk through all possible combinations hoping to guess correct. These attacks are done by brute force, meaning they use excessive forceful attempts to try and force their way into your private accounts. Phishing attacks. Now it is a type of social engineering attack often used to steal user data, including login credentials and credit card numbers. It occurs when an attacker makes a victim to click a malicious link in email, instance message or text message, which can lead to the installation of malware freezing the system as part of a ransomware attack or revealing of sensitive information. Now malware, it is malicious software and the ransomware, actually it is type of the ma ma malware, it is used to encrypt all of the system data and you need to pay money so to get the, the decryption key. We will talk about them later on, no worries. Bots and botnets. Botnet is a collection of internet connected devices infected by malware and it is called bot. So the bot is a single device and botnet is a bot networks. Okay, so that allow hackers to control them. Cyber criminals use botnets to in instigate botnet attacks which include malicious activities such as credential leaks, unauthorized access, data theft and DDoS attacks and these are the most important one actually. The denial of service attacks. Now it's time to talk about DOS or DDoS and the difference is that DOS attack floods a server with traffic making a website or resource unavailable 
the DDoS, which is the distributed denial of service, is a DOS attack that uses multiple computers or machines to flood a targeted resource. So the only difference between them, DOS is a, it is a single computer or a single machine. DDoS, which is the distributed, we use multiple computers or machines. Many the middle attacks. It is attack when an attacker intercepts communications between two parties either to secretly eavesdrop or modify traffic traveling between the two. And attackers might use many the middle attacks to steal login credentials or personal information, spy on the victim, or sabotage communications or corrupt data. We have SQL injections. The SQL injection is a code injection technique that might destroy your database and it is one of the most common web hacking technologies and it is the placement of malicious code in SQL statement via web page input. Cybersecurity malware. Now we have the virus and worms. So the primary difference between virus and worm is that viruses must be triggered by activities of their host. Whereas, worms are standalone malicious software that can self-replicate and propagate independently as soon as they have breached the system. So worms do not require activation or any human intervention to execute or spread their code. Now we have the Trojan. Now the Trojan horse or the Trojan is type of malware that is often disguised as legitimate of software. Trojans can be employed by cyber thieves and hackers trying to gain access to users' systems. Users are typically tricked by some form of social engineering into loading and executing Trojans on their systems. Once activated, Trojans can enable cyber criminals to spy on you, steal your insensitive data, and gain backdoor access to your system. We have spyware and adware. So spyware is basically any technology that helps gather information about a computer user without their knowledge. But the adware is any software with banner advertisement display while it is running. We have the ransomware. Now ransomware is a form of malware that encrypts a victim's file and the attacker then demands a ransom from the victim to restore access to the data upon payment. Users are shown instructions for how to pay a fee to get the description key. Cybersecurity defenses. The first thing, which is the antivirus. It is kind of software that used to prevent, scan, detect, and delete viruses from computer. Once installed, most antiviruses software runs automatically in the background to provide real-time protection against virus attacks. Encryption. Encryption is the method which Encryption is the method by which information is converted into secret code that hides the information through meaning. The science of encryption and decryption information is called cryptography. In computing, an encrypted data is also known as plain text and encrypted data is called ciphertext. Firewall. A firewall is a system designed to prevent unauthorized access to or from a private network. You can implement a firewall in either hardware or software form or a combination of both. We have the biometrics. Biometrics is the measurement and statistical analysis of people's unique physical and behavioral characteristics. The technology is mainly used for identification and access control or for identifying individuals who are under surveillance. We have the MFA or the multi-factor authentication. Now, it is an electronic authentication method in which a device user is granted access to a website or application, and only after successfully presenting two or more pieces of evidence to an authentication mechanism, knowledge, position, and inheritance. So this means that you can access the system. Cybersecurity experts work in every size company and industry to protect organizations from data breaches and attacks. Moreover, the demand for cybersecurity professionals is growing at a neck breaking speed. Job posting for cybersecurity positions have grown three times faster than opportunities for the IT jobs overall. Here are the 10 career pathways you can pursue as cybersecurity. Now, by the way, actually, I got this from Articat. I found it online and it is very useful.
The first thing, security software developer. Security software developer build security software and integrate security into application software during the design and development process. Depending on the specific position and company, a security software developer might oversee a team of developers in the creation of secure software tools, develop a company-wide software security strategy, participate in the lifecycle development of software systems, support software deployment to customers, and test their work for vulnerabilities. Security Architect Career Path if you are an enthusiastic about problem solving and formulating big picture strategies, the security architect career path is for you. A security architect is meant to create, build, and execute network and computer security for an organization. Security architects are responsible for developing complex security framework and ensuring that they function effectively. They design security systems to counter malware, hacking, and DDoS attacks. Security Consultant A security consultant is a catch-all cybersecurity expert. They evaluate cybersecurity threats, risks, problems, and give possible solutions for different organizations and guide them in protecting and securing their physical capital and data. Security consultant must not be too rigid and must be a tech savvy. They deal with a wide range of variables when assessing security systems across diverse companies and industries. Information security analysts are the frontline defense of networks. Information security analysts put firewalls and encryption in order to protect breaches, constantly monitoring and audited systems for unusual activities. Ethical hackers normally hold a CEH certificate and are given license by their employers to try and infiltrate the, the security of their system. The idea is that they use the same techniques as malicious black hat hackers to test existing security protocols. If they are successful, upgrades can then be developed and implemented. Computer forensics analysts focus on cybercrime and ever growing phenomenon. They work with law enforcement agencies in both public and private sector organization and are asked to undertake and a wide variety of tasks, including recovering de deleted files, interpreting data linked to crime, analyzing mobile phone records, pursuing data trade. The computer forensics analyst must keep a well-detailed records of their investigation and often provide evidence in court. Chief Information Security Officer is normally a mid-executive level position whose job is to manage the affairs operation of a company's organizing IT security division. CISOs are usually responsible for planning, coordinating, and directing all computer network and data security needs of their employers. The CISOs work directly with the management to determine an organization custom cybersecurity demands. The CISOs are usually saddled with the responsibility of assembling an effective staff of security professionals which means that the position requires an individual with strong background in IT security architecture and strategy as well as effective communication and human resource skills. Ventilation tester is the proactive authorized employment of testing producers on the IT system to identify system flaws. A ventilation tester usually attempts to, with the permission, hack to preemptively discover operating system vulnerabilities, services, and application problems, improper configuration, and more. Before an intruder causes real damage, ventilation testers or pen testers must be highly skilled, often using testing tools of their own design to break into the systems and their watch, and the ventilation tester actually required to keep accurate records of their activities and discovered vulnerabilities. IT security consultant meet with clients to advise them on how to protect their organization, cybersecurity objective best effectively and cost effectively. IT security consultants are often employed by smaller firms and agencies that cannot afford to handle their security issues in-house but are also employed by big cooperation to supplement their security teams and provide impartial outside perspective to current system challenges. The security systems administrator Responsibility is a bit similar to many cybersecurity jobs, installing, administrating, maintaining, 
and troubleshooting computer network and data security systems. The main distinction between the, the security systems administrator and other cybersecurity professionals is that the security system administrator is normally the person in charge of daily operation of those security systems. The regular tasks include system monitoring and running, regular backup and setting up, deleting, and maintaining individual user accounts. Security systems administrators are usually often involved in developing in organizational security procedures. Social engineering attacks explode social interactions to gain access to valuable data. At the root of all social engineering attacks is deception. Cyber criminals trick and manipulate their targets into taking certain actions such as bypassing security measures or disclosing certain sensitive information. Many retailers use third parties for services such as payment processing. As such, they often believe the liability for a third party breach doesn't apply to them. In reality, using a third party vendor doesn't absolve them of responsibility for a data breach. Many attacks start with outdated software. For this reason, not staying up to date with software batches leaves companies vulnerable to any number of information security breaches. As soon as attackers learn of a software vulnerability, they can exploit it to launch a cyber attack. The more we rely on the cloud for data storage, the higher the risk of major breach. Cloud services are vulnerable to a wide range of cyber attacks. This includes account hijacking and denial of service, the DOS attacks, which prevent companies from being able to access their data. Ransomware attacks are serious cyber threat. These attacks infect your network and hold your data and computer systems hostage until a ransom is paid. The immediate losses from the ransom are only at the tip of iceberg. The monetary damages from lost productivity and data loss are often the most destructive to business. Attacks like these are why 60% of small businesses go out of business with six months of cyber breach. Simply meeting data compliance standard is not the same as continuous and robust protection. For example, many companies need to meet payment card industry data security standard BCI DSS for their annual audit. However, this is not necessarily representative of their usual standard of protection. According to Verison's BCI compliance report, four out of five companies fail to maintain compliance up their intern assessment. These were the same companies that previously met compliance standards. Companies that were deemed PCI DSS compliant still suffered from cybersecurity breaches, some just weeks after they were certified. As these companies have learned, meeting adequate legal standard is not a substitute for cyber protection. Mobile technology can be a significant assist to businesses, but it can also expose them to potential cybersecurity breaches. Findings from a recent mobile security report conclude that one in five organizations suffer from mobile security breaches. The majority of these attacks came from a malware and malicious Wi-Fi.
Many companies are encouraging employees to use personal devices at work as part of their bring your own device BIOD policies. This has several benefits, including increased flexibility and convenience. Some even claim it helps to increase productivity and morale. The Internet of Things or IoT connects devices from all over the world through the Internet. This allows for a network of devices that can store, send, and receive data. Because of its convenience, many individuals and businesses are taking advantage of it. Not all threats to cybersecurity come from a software. The base at which software updates are released can make it difficult for the hardware to keep up. This in turn creates exposures that can put companies' data at risk. As hardware becomes obsolete, many outdated devices will not allow updates with the latest batches and security measures. Devices that rely on older software are more susceptible to cyber attacks creating a major potential vulnerability. It is important to monitor this and respond quickly when devices become out of date. Just like you should keep your software up to date, you should do the same with hardware. Now 10 Cybersecurity Best Practices Cybersecurity Best Practices encompass some general best practices like being cautious when engaging in online activities, abiding by company rules, and reaching out for help when you encounter something suspicious. Now here's a deeper dive into 10 Cybersecurity Best Practices for businesses that every employee should know and follow. Alright, I will leave you, read them out, we will start them one by one. All right.